All right, everybody. This is Blue's tank. I'm actually going to be cleaning it out for her. As you can tell, I haven't cleaned it out in a bit, but we're actually going to do something very new with it. We're going to set it up with a bioactive substrate from a gentleman named BioDude, whose link I will add into uh, down below for you guys. So, uh, and she'll have an actual better, more natural habitat for herself. All right, everybody, her cage has been cleaned and most of her props have been cleaned and I've actually have everything set out from the bio dude uh, that I'm going to be putting inside of her tank. I have my special guest, Irish Horseman, which you will know um, from many of my streams and or videos in the future. We're basically going to create multiple different kinds of content. Um, Pretty much whatever we think is cool. Yeah. Truck stuff, video games, reptiles, fish. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I built that really nice computer over there just for this. So, but we're going to go through a little bit of breakdown of all the different things here um, so that you can at home know what to do for your own leopard gecko. Um, I will also be posting the video <clears throat> link for the Bio Dudes website and YouTube video so that you can actually get his perspective on everything. So, uh, but I'm going to go through everything and set it up separately. Uh, so I'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back and everything. Uh, we're going to go in and start uh, setting the Exoterra tank up that I have set up for her. Uh, you previously saw, I'm going to make it this bioactive setup uh, to make it more natural for her and so i haven't personally done it before our sourceman has uh so he's actually going to speak a little bit and go in the depth on certain aspects of things that i don't even know yet so i'm still learning like you guys are but the first step is we're going to take this the terra sahara uh handcrafted bio substrate now something i want to say about this stuff um if you're new to bioactive terrariums and you don't know much about it uh, something that you'll see a lot of people do that do these setups that don't use a Terra Sahara, you're actually supposed to put a drainage layer in so that you don't get too much moisture buildup and mold and it, it basically absorbs all the excess moisture. What's great about this is you don't need to do that with this. Um, a lot of people use clay balls. With this you just put it in and it'll actually hold the moisture in the different layers. Um, so basically when you set it up, you're going to miss this once a day, depending on your application. This is an arid setup. Uh, leopard geckos are from a more dry uh, environment, so it's not really humid. So what's great about this blend is you'll miss the top of it at the beginning of the day, and it'll dry out, but the bottom two layers, which is where your springtails and your coke pods are going to live, that's going to stay nice and wet for them to survive. Uh, they do need that. You cannot forget the mist or you're gonna end up losing your insect colony. So we're gonna go ahead and... Also what's nice with this is even though the moisture holds and all that, it still creates little air pockets in there so that those right. guys can thrive. And one thing that you'll notice we do, um, I'm gonna put a layer in, just one bag, and then we're actually gonna skip to another step and BioDude does this in his videos. So definitely check those out in the link. Um, I'm gonna mix in some of this uh, moss throughout the layer. I'm gonna put a, a good bit on top um, just to hold the moisture for shedding purposes. But putting it throughout the layers, at least I found in my leopard gecko setup, it helps keep that moisture even more. I mean, this stuff does a great job on its own, but any little bit extra you can do to help create the environment, this stuff will break down. Um, your copepods, your sprint tails, they'll start to eat it. And it's basically going to uh, re disperse nutrients throughout your, your soil and that's going to help your plants whatever you put in here survive and basically what you're shooting to do is set up a little miniature ecosystem so you you want to have layers of nutrients and stuff for the bugs to feed on and 
Also, what's nice with this setup too, and as if you could see over there, I have, you can put uh, certain kind of plants that actually work well with leopard geckos. Uh, succulents are one of those, so any of the species of succulents. So I actually went to Home Depot and got a good couple kind. Uh, might not use all of them, um, but when we skip ahead to that step, the one thing you gotta worry about is the factor of uh, the fertilizer, because sometimes with them being a, a uh, from a, a big store like that, they'll have fertilizer in the soil. So what you wanna do is make sure that you take them out, clean them, clean all the fertilizer off, which is a step that I'm going to do off camera. I'm just stating right now, you just wanna make sure any of that's off because that will uh, harm your, your leopard gecko as well as the insects in here that help break everything down. The leopard gecko itself isn't going to eat the plants. They are insectivores. Um, I mean, they're just gonna eat the, the insect feeders that you put in here. The problem is since you're creating this environment, um, the, the insects are going to eat it, and if you've been keeping animals, specifically reptiles, uh, for any amount of time and you're doing your research, you know gut loading is a thing. So anything that insect eats, in turn, your reptile is going to eat. And if it's eating fertilizer, then you're going to end up with some potential health problems, potentially a vet bill. Just, it's best to avoid it. So give those a good thorough rinsing with uh, dechlorinated water. Very important to use dechlorinated water for anything you're misting. That's um, why today we actually have a nice jug of distilled water. So basically all the nutrients are out of this water, but the main purpose is just to keep the moisture in there. The nutrients and everything else for the most part is already in there between that and the moss and what the bugs are going to break down and create. So, all right, we're going to skip ahead a little bit uh, to the next step. Uh, so all you guys are going to miss, we're going to add good bit of water to this bag cut the top off we're going to do this over his dry sink or not his dry sink rather but his yeah. wash tub my wash tub downstairs just because i don't want it leaking all over my game room <laughs> yeah so you're going to cut the top off like i did kind of grab the top give it a good shake so that you get all that water all throughout here that's just going to help keep the moisture in um it's going to start out an initial moisture layer for you throughout this because we're going to mix good portion of this bag in with the Terra Sahara and uh, put the rest on the upper level to create a humid hide. Uh, basically something that zombie penguin or what's your other tag? <laughs> I'm Blackout the Reaper. Blackout the Reaper, sorry. That's his new one. He's been zombie penguin to me for like 20 years. So zombie penguin is going to Blackout the Reaper is going to miss this every day to keep his uh to keep, keep the, the moisture humid yep. so that shedding doesn't become an issue because one thing that is a problem with leopard geckos uh if you're new to the hobby if they shed their shed on their fingers is one of the last things to go and if they don't shed properly what could happen is the skin could build up around their fingers cut off circulation and they'll actually lose those uh appendages um it's not something you want to put your animal through so uh take the take the right steps if you're gonna get an animal commit to keeping it properly and keep it healthy i've had my leopard gecko for 20 years almost 21. um he i i did i did a poor job at first i didn't i, I didn't hit the ground running knowing what i was doing which I'm sadly everyone it. does and no one's going to to be ashamed if you're you're willing to learn and willing to grow and that's the step in the process i'm trying to take i inherited a free lizard from my sister and the between the tank and the light fixtures before that was 150 dollars in the and in, into this project and then this is another hundred dollars and i guarantee you there's gonna be a lot more uh so it, it does become a hobby of passion as you as it grows yeah just because the, le the leopard gecko or any lizard at a store is 20 bucks doesn't mean it's a good reason to buy it there is other costs involved you got to keep it fed lighting has to be right heating uh temperature uh, they are animals they have feelings they have needs they have um, needs you have to meet them or they're not going to last and there's no sense in putting an animal through any unnecessary discomfort by not taking care of it properly so if you're going to make the purchase commit do it properly like you said we're gonna go wash this rinse this we'll get this set up and get prepped for the next step all right we got a nice little bit of water to this uh roughly about a uh, little bit over a quarter of the gallon into here as well as i mix some of it straight into the substrate 
what I'm going to do is about do roughly about half the bag in there. I'm going to get it all mixed up, churned all together. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Mm. This is nice. Actually, what I'm going to do is probably add a little bit more dirt. The kit you get online, uh, which I will link as well uh, down below, uh, is set up, uh, I think, for, I want to say, a 40-gallon tank. 20 long is what it's uh, rated for, but you end up with so much. You, add, you have a lot of extra stuff. You don't have to use all of it, but don't be afraid to use all of it to make it look nice. I used all of it, and it's probably a good four inches thick of the Terra Sahara whenever you mix everything together. It's, it's a lot of material. So this tank is technically a 20 gallon long, but I don't think I'm going to be able to fit all of this stuff in here. So I will have some left over. And my wife might kill me because I just got dirt on the ground and she literally just sweeped, swept this. So rip. So this may be my first and last video for you guys. Mrs. The Reaper is not entertained. Quick dive in the why I chose Blackout The Reaper is my new name. Uh, Irish Horseman and I have been best friends for 25 some years. Uh, so much so that actually at weddings we go out for the couples dance and all. And our wives referred to both of us as husbands. To each other uh we've been scare actors for what would you say about 15 years no that's probably not too far off 12 12 13 years something like that and one of our sticks right now that we've just come up with with the, maybe the past four year four or five years is the four horsemen of the apocalypse before that i was a swat guy called blackout and now i'm the reaper so blackout the reaper And I'm Irish Horseman because my last name literally translates to that in Old Irish. So, that's fun. Alright. All right. Next up we're going to go into, um, you can lay out your tank however you like. Uh, what's nice and what is convenient for them though is leopard geckos need a dry hide someplace that they can go um, Where that they can go up and bask. I tend to keep my lights over here So it's a lot warmer the heating pads over here. So this is where she'll get her heat for the most part uh, Over here on this side will be a moist hide. I'm gonna have a lot of uh, Like cork tunnels uh, whenever they finally come in. I'm gonna basically set them up and in this whole area it'd be a lot moisture or a lot more moisture over here so you have a dry side and a moist side but i'm going to add a little bit more of the terra sahara like i said you're, you're going to end up probably using a decent chunk of it and i'm going to kind of grade this upward and probably put some of the succulents i got over in this vicinity one thing you don't want to, if you're doing this kind of a setup and you're noticing that you're running out of room, we're starting to get there, honestly. Um, you want to leave a little bit of room for your leaf litter. That's going to be critical. Uh, something that, uh, I don't know if we mentioned it or not earlier, but they, the uh, copepods pods and your uh, springtails are going to eat that moss to an extent. But the this insects is... insects that help break everything down. This is going to be their creme de la creme on top of... Uh, you know, your leopard geckos droppings. Uh, in that vein, something very important to note. Um, these guys, they are going to break down the animal droppings, but uh, they aren't going to eat the urates, which are the little white spots you often see attached to the poop. So you are still going to have to spot clean. Um, that's not something, you know, these sets are nice because the maintenance does to an extent um, kind of start to taper off a little bit compared to if you're doing like a, uh, a mat setup kind of like what she's in right now while we're prepping her tank. Um, 
these are these are great for what they are uh, but they do tend to get dirty and they can uh, be a little bit of a chore to clean um, so you tend to replace that this is going to be a self-sustaining ecosystem so spot cleaning a couple little spots of urate every once in a while uh, going to be a lot less work than dealing with something like that you're going to want to watch it for a couple months um because for the first couple of months uh while the the ecosystem that's centralized to your terrarium here uh or vivarium whichever word you want to use for it uh it's going to take a little bit to get set up and cycled properly just like any other hobby like with fish you have to make sure that the proper uh, uh ecosystems set up for them to get it going properly so for the first couple of months you want to keep your eyes peeled because they might not break down the uh her waist uh, that quickly and that properly but um, once uh, maybe three four five months uh, it should start picking up on its own uh, like uh, Irish horseman said here you want to do your spot cleans but at the same moment uh, it won't be as frequent as what you're used to so and eventually you'll see an explosion of uh, activity on your uh, your terrarium floor uh, it'll eventually start you know, you'll see some droppings one day and the next you'll just see the urate. It goes that quick. Um, if you take care of this properly, it's really not a chore at all. Oh, this is something important. Uh, if you do want to monitor your, uh, I keep saying copepods. I think it's actually isopods. I think copepods are what you get in the aquarium hobby. I don't know. There's just so much information up here that's... I'm going to have to put in big bold print, not copepods, isopods. Probably. Yeah, we're probably going to end up with that. The bugs that eat all the stuff to make myself sound like an idiot. Uh, if you want to monitor their progress as far as a colony, um, something you could do is you can like blanch a cucumber and stick it in the aquarium or the terrarium. Wrong hobby. Uh, every so often, pick it up, look on the underneath. Uh, they will be feasting on the bottom of that thing, and you'll actually see a large colony starting to form so um just something if you're the impatient type and you want to know what's going on something extra you could do i didn't personally but uh we can certainly show you that if it's something you're interested in leave a like comment subscribe do the thing and we're back so we are going to work on adding in some of the leaf litter at this point uh something i did i don't know if the bio dude did i, I watched this entire video but it was a while ago so honestly I forget, but it made sense to me, so I went for it. Um, I did put the majority of this on the top layer, but I also worked this in through the soil a little bit. Um, just because, like I said, your insects are going to live all throughout the column of this soil, uh, the Terra Sahara. So, I mean, they're going to need things to feast on here and there. They are going to eventually focus very heavily on the droppings, but uh, this just is going to help sustain everything while it's setting up. So, what I did, and I just kind of sprinkle it in there and just keep your hands work it in basically you'll just mix everything together we're making it we're taking very simple steps of mixing everything together and, and complicating it for you we are because we have to comment and, and say stuff that makes us sound smart and edumacated definitely edumacated Like we said, he, they give you a ton of stuff. Probably don't need to use all this. We can. I'm going to leave that up to blackout. I'm okay with using whatever. Basically, these leaves are just going to break down and, and help uh, the, the bacteria basically set up properly. Uh, your um, isopods are going to be the ones uh, eating it, the, the little insects setting up every helping basically helping maintain the tank that's their job their life role is to maintain so uh something else that may come up um for you more experienced keepers um you might have the question will this setup impact my leopard gecko it absolutely can um if your husbandry isn't right then your leopard gecko's immune system is going to be lower which is actually what causes impaction for those of you that don't know what impaction is it's actually where the intestines get inflamed and they aren't able to pass uh, their fecal matter and um, can cause the death, infection, uh, all kinds of messy things. So 
if, as long as you're doing things like gut loading your your feed um these guys need calcium powder on there therefore they, they don't generate quite enough calcium on their own um there's all kinds of literature out there for leopard geckos i highly suggest reading up on it even there's countless videos on youtube really good sources um i'm pretty sure bio dude even talks a little bit about husbandry whenever he's doing his video so definitely check that out as well um but yeah that just goes back and you know take care of your animal if, if, if it's going to be a purchase you're going to make take care of your animal yeah these are living things again so not to drill that in your head uh because everyone in the hobby you you want a pet but they're they're Pets are more than just pets, they're, they're, they're family. So treat it as if you were treating your, yourself, which hopefully is proper and well. So uh, one of the last steps uh, to at least setting up the humid area is I'm just gonna sprinkle a good bit of this right on top. This will stay wet throughout the day and help hold the humidity on this side of the Vivarium. Terrarium, vivarium. Way too much. Perfect. Your animal's home. While he fiddles with that, a good purchase, which I will link in the uh, comments below as well, is a nice little mister. This thing was maybe 10 bucks at most. Uh, fill it up. You want to obviously fill it up with dechlorinated water. Distilled water works. Uh, purified water works. Um, but just fill it up. You pump it up. You missed everything for uh, like 10-15 seconds. And that's literally all you need to do uh, all day. You have another hide? Uh, not. You're waiting on your cork wood. Yeah, I'm waiting on my cork wood. Okay. And I will just place this here for now. I might shrink the size of the water dish. That is a substantial water dish. <laughs> uh we local to here there's a uh a family fish store uh they have a used sale uh <laughs> once a month and i saw it when i originally got the the leopard gecko and so i was like yeah um she doesn't drink that much water which is Not something which is something i've learned um so i'm definitely probably going to shrink down uh the bull size but for now that's perfectly fine uh, whenever the cork wood comes in, which I will do a follow-up video, uh, it's going to be, I'm going to position it mostly all over here. Uh, and a good reason as to why you would not want to do this, it's not so much going to affect your animal so much as what it's eating. Uh, depending on how you feed, some people don't feed live, some people do. I have let my leopard gecko hunt for 20 years, and he's made it to 20 years, and he loves to do it. Uh, but what that means is I have live crickets in his terrarium most times and for whatever reason they love to drown themselves Yep, suicide and crickets. That's going to contaminate your water and I I've never had anything come of it as far as health issues with my leopard gecko, but I'm very good about changing out his water um, Something this large he's definitely gonna get at least three four or five crickets in there depending on what he allows run through there on a normal basis i get maybe about one to two dead crickets uh, a week uh from from feeding her and all that in there and if you don't take them out they do stink yes they do decay they are living creatures and their bodies break down just kind of name a game with the setup uh but our next step we're gonna cut for a moment and um what we're gonna do just so you're aware, if you want to um, grab one, we're going to start adding the plants. Um, Just grab any of them. Find a good example. There we go. All right, so this is a little succulent from Home Depot, like Blackout said. Um, all these little white balls, balls, that's all fertilizer, and you really don't want that getting mixed in with your animal. So we're going to take the distilled water, rinse the root system off, and add it there. Um, shouldn't be too much of a shock for the plant. These are desert plants, so they're very hard to kill. That being said, it's not impossible. So everything in here needs a certain level of care. This isn't any exception. Um, plants do take a different kind of lighting. There's heat lighting and then there's UVB lighting. You can get an LED grow light or uh, really any kind of grow, grow light. You can get it from Home Depot mm -hmm. online. There's 
tons of sources for i have the uh old style heat lamps uh the dual combo one one there's a night heat and a uh, day heat um i'm probably going to switch the night heat to somewhat of a, a uv uh style bulb for it um don't know how i'm going to set it up but that would be part of a follow-up video so we'll be back all right guys we are back have a nice little layout of some succulents sadly had one not do so well uh for time being until my corkwood comes in my bowl of water is going to stay over there uh i will relocate it probably somewhere right around here so that her uh, other hide can be right over there so what we basically did while we were off camera um we stripped the planters off of the plants uh worked as much of the uh, old soil and the fertilizer off of the root system as we could all the fertilizer are just little tiny white uh, like orbs uh, ground up into the dirt so if you lift up any po uh, plant uh, potted plant from Home Depot or Lowe's uh, or any uh, uh, plant store you can uh, I, I, like you'll see it the majority of them have it so the next step uh, we're gonna add the bio news bio shot uh, this is basically, um, it says right on there, a supplement of beneficial microorganisms and nutrients for bioactive vivaria. Uh, this is going to jump start the whole system for you. Um, what you do, it's, it smells... It smells not, quite wonderful. Not great. Um, you're just going to sprinkle that in through the system. There's quite a bit. Get, it, we'll get that out of her water bowl. Think of this more as a natural um, fertilizer. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna probably I drop some water in there, so I'm probably gonna wash it out one more time. And our final step before we add our scaly friend, uh, these are the springtails. The these are blackout. the insects. Um, these guys are microscopic, like not microscopic, but they're very tiny. Very, very small. Um, so when you crack the lid, you're probably, you're not going to see a whole lot going on in there. This is why I recommend the uh, cucumber method. Uh, like I said, blanch cucumber, stick it in there, uh, give it a day or two. Uh, right before the light kicks on, uh, pick it up. You'll probably see a bunch of little white dots uh, moving around underneath. Ooh, that smells so we're just gonna all you do for this is just dump them in i think i see one yeah i do they're in there see i'm moving around yeah there's a little if you look real close i don't know if you're gonna be able to see it on camera there's one right there kind of shadow and on so they're they're in there the, when you get these cultures there's not usually a ton of them but they explode rather quickly um, as long as they have what they need this whole thing will be crawling with these guys very shortly uh, yeah just kind of mix it in there and they're off to the races it doesn't look like anything right now honestly when I got mine I thought it was empty and I got ripped off too, but I gave it a couple days and I actually lifted out my uh, water dish one morning and there was hundreds of them underneath the water dish. Anywhere where it's uh, dark and damp, they'll kind of... Uh, they love moisture. Yeah. They actually, they have to stay some degree of wet. Wet. Thus, in the beginning of the video, why I mixed the water with the, the substrate to begin with, because uh, you want to add the extra dampness. It actually, uh, when you order them and when you buy them, the, the packs actually come uh, pre-proportioned, uh, like you see, uh, and they're actually, they have somewhat of a moisture to them, which is pretty cool, so. so all I'm gonna do at this point, uh, we, this was a gallon, we're down to, 20 percent probably per gallon yeah um that's how much it took to get the root systems properly clean so i'm just going to give this mister a pump and i want to do this for about a minute you don't have to soak everything but you want it to be nice and damp yeah 
Now your plants, um, you don't have to water these daily. Every plant is going to be a little bit different, but you have to keep in mind these are desert plants. Um, so the misting is fine, but you will have to actually water them. Um, the ones I got were at least once a week. I can't remember the species I got. Um, but an example, I got an aloe plant and it's only recommended that you water that once a month. Uh, so just uh, something yeah, to keep you in You can't mind. oversaturate them, but at the same time, like, uh, like Irish Horseman said here, they're desert plants, so they're used to, to being dry. They're pretty hardy plants, uh, as most succulents are. So. so, I mean, that looks pretty wet right now, but once the heat lamp's on, that whole thing will dry up pretty quick. Your moss is going to stay nice and wet. Um, that's going to be your humid area, and moisture is going to start to collect. You'll actually start to see pockets. I don't know if you can see it yet. You can kind of see it on this end. It might be hard to pick up with this lighting, but there's little pockets of moisture already starting to form. I'll have to show that on. Yeah, I'll have to show that on another. But uh, this is pretty much fundamentally it for now. Uh, what we'll do now. Um, Basically, I'm going to take this guy, this whole tank set up, set it back up there on my entertainment center, uh, and you can see the, the terrible towels there, and you can kind of guess where we're from. Um, but anywhere it's. Anywhere in yeah. the United States, because it's the most. Popular. True, true. Anywhere in the United States, wink, wink, because the Steelers are uh, the number one team in the world. But. It's gonna go back up here. I'm gonna get the light on, uh, have everything set up. There's uh, mesh fence covers for on top here. I'm gonna put back, uh, have everything on. Um, I did have this background uh, that I was thinking about putting back on, but it's kind of small. It was the, what came with it whenever I purchased it. Uh, it's a nice little zoom med uh, setup. Um, I may actually go and purchase the cork board background, or I may just get something of my, my own uh the setup on there um whenever we put it back up there i'm gonna put my little heat pad underneath this side uh so she could stay nice and warm uh since this is going to kind of be her warm side for the most part um and we'll see you guys in a couple minutes all right we're going to put her back in um as you can see this is pretty much all the leftovers my kind of setup up there i really didn't need uh, all of this stuff uh once more again you could use whatever you want uh make it however you want what's nice about this guy uh he's done a lot of research with this he gives you a lot of extra so in essence you can kind of layer this however you want um one of the things i'm going to state the heating pad i actually put under this side over here um because our shortsman brought up a good idea um since my hide that was originally sitting on top of my layout uh is actually come it's kind of somewhat buried now it might be a little bit too close for her and i don't want her burning herself or anything like that so i took it and actually put it on this side so that the heat comes over here and then this way uh she'll have the basking rock that's going to hold and retain the heat from the heat lamp up there all right everybody this is blue as you can tell, she's really not blue, but the reason I uh, called her blue uh, is I got her when the first Jurassic Park came out. So, Jurassic World. Jurassic World, my, my apologies. So as you could tell, she's uh, she's very friendly. She loves me. Um, she's very curious. So with this new layout, I really think that it's gonna work for her. So. Go ahead, little girl. I'm putting her on this side so that maybe she scouts her cave. Uh, she can look around. Uh, this piece of wood I had in there before uh, from her last setup, I'm going to try and keep it in here whenever the cork wood comes in. I put the bowl over here just for the this extensive purposes um, uh, with bottled water, just uh, distilled bottled water. Um, whenever this, uh, whenever I get the new bowl, I'm going to set it up over here. But as you can tell, she's very curious, so she's going to explore a lot. So, <sighs> thank you for coming along on our little adventure, um, making her habitat and her world 
a lot nicer and a lot better. Um, just hopefully have this all sets up properly and I will do a recap video on a couple days uh, to, to show you how it works out for her as well as uh, the the whenever my cork wood comes in I'll show you the the tunnel I'm gonna set up for her uh, over on the right side here as well as replacing the bull so. all right everybody it's about two days later my cork wood tunnel has arrived it's a nice little tunnel as you can tell put a little bit of the moss inside there and I wetted it down um, I told you got rid of that big bull I ended up actually using a little bit of a smaller bull putting it in the back there and I made a nice little climbing stump out of that other piece of wood but again I'm gonna be misting this constantly trying to get this nice little wet this will be her moist side um, and again this will be her dry side and there she is you loving it baby girl all right everyone i hope you enjoyed our video here i uh, thank you for watching please subscribe uh, please comment below ask any questions you want i'm learning i'm hoping that anything that i've learned i can pass on to you guys and make your transition into properly owning uh and, and obtaining a leopard gecko pet uh yeah you gotta stand there little girl but uh hopefully I've uh, made your journeys a little bit easier. So, have a wonderful and blessed evening, all. Huh?